We have seen the movements in animals and how the movements are controlled and coordinated in animals. Animals have got a specialized tissue called nervous tissue by which they can control and coordinate their movements. Now let us see about the plant and how the coordination takes place in the plants. First we look at the movements in plants. Do plants produce any movements? Yes, of course, we have already discussed in the beginning of the lesson. We find certain movements in plants. We have taken movement as a basic character by which we distinguish a living and a non-living thing. So definitely in plants also we observe movements. Let us see what are the movements. Say for example, the first example we take here is example 1, touch me not plant, chui mui or uh, touch me not mimosa plant, it has got leaves, this way and when you touch the leaves with your finger, the leaves they droop or close. So there you find a kind of movement. So here we observe movement in plants. The movements in plants are sometimes or in some examples, they are associated with growth. Sometimes they are not associated with growth. See the example too. Seed grows to a plant. The seed coat breaks and the radical whatever that comes out the root it grows down the shoot comes up in the direction of light. So here there is a movement the movement is associated with growth. You stop at the growth of the seed there is no movement. Here the movement in plant is associated with growth. Here in case of example 1 the movement is not associated with growth. So in plants we see the movements which are growth related and not related to growth. Two kinds of movements. Movements that are linked up with growth that are not linked with growth. These kind of movements are observed in plants. But how these movements are controlled? How they are coordinated? So we know the fact that they do not have any nervous tissue as like in animals. Let us see how these movements are controlled in plants. So here in the example one, we have seen a kind of movement in plant and what kind of movement it is. It is a quick movement, just like the reflexes in animals. So this is, we can take it as response to stimuli. What is the stimuli? You are touching the leaves. What is the response? The leaves, they droop. That is the response. You can compare this with a reflex in your body in case of humans, touching a hot object removing hand quickly so here the response to stimuli in animals we have taken the touching a hot object here in case of plants touch to leaves Here response leaves droop or close. This is what happens. The leaves they fold, they get closed. That's what happens here. But in both the cases, in case of plants and in case of animals, if you observe both the cases, is the way of execution of the movement is same? No. Here this is achieved by the nervous tissue. Here there is no nervous tissue. You are touching, you are putting your finger on the leaves, the leaves are drooping. That means they are sensing that. How they are sensing? Do they have any sensory neurons? No. Do they have any receptors? No. The plants, they don't have nervous system, but even then they have some kind of electrochemical means of communication. But it is one thing is clear that they have some communication. Of course the nervous system is absent. Of course the neurons are absent. Even in the plants, they have some communication. They are able to recognize the change in the environment. That is by some electrochemical means. In this way, the information is gathered by the plant. 
here in case of touching a hot object your neurons your receptors will take the information by the sensory neuron to the spinal cord but in case of plants some electrochemical means help to recognize the stimuli then how the response the movement is produced do they have any muscles muscle cells muscle cells muscle fibers muscle proteins we have seen in animals the muscle proteins are able to rearrange themselves and re change their shape so by that the muscle shape is changed and movement is caused that is the case in animals but in case of plants how the movements are caused here again the movements in the cellular level but here it is not because of any muscle proteins the plant cells do not have any muscle proteins to change their shape to cause the motion movement here in case of plant cells the movements are caused because due to the change in the arrangement of cells the increase or decrease in the size of the cell by the amount of water present in the cell the best example we can see that there is tomato you have already studied about this tomato the tomato are the pores present on the leaf which helps in absorption of carbon dioxide and oxygen from the environment here so the stomata is a pore which is guarded by guard cells when there is heavy light more temperature then these guard cells they close this stomata so the guard cells they operate they create some movement opening and closing opening and closing how this opening and closing is achieved how the movement is achieved there the movement is achieved because of the amount of water present in the stomata when the water levels are less the stomata they close when the water level is high when the plant is having sufficient water then they become stiff and turbid they open the stomata so here the movement is caused here in parts of the plant that is by changing the shape of the cell it is done by the amount of water in case of plants but in case of animals the muscle fiber it changes its shape because of the muscle proteins they are able to change their shape at the same time they are able to change the arrangement so that is a basic difference which we have to identify here between the animals and in case of the plants so in this way the movements are controlled in plants and here these movements are as a response to the stimuli but how the movements related to growth are controlled and coordinated in plants so here in the beginning we have discussed that the movements in plants are of two kinds one not linked up with growth the second one is linked up with growth not related to growth response to stimuli this is the case here we learned how these kind of movements are produced now let us see how the movements are produced which are related to or which are associated with growth now let us see the different kinds of movements that are produced in plants and how these kind of movements are produced movement due to growth here the responses are of different types some responses in plants are very quick some responses are slow some responses are very slow even though they are a response to a stimulus it happens very slowly now let us see the case here response to different things like light gravity touch water chemicals we call these kind of slow movements as tropic movements which are observed in plants tropic movements so plants respond to this light gravity that is towards the earth touch water chemicals you see the light we call it as phototropism plants respond to light the shoot always grow towards the sunlight it is because of uh, some chemical compound present in its tip but we see the movement of stem growing towards sunlight roots always grow away from the sunlight so here the phototropism is again two kinds positive and negative so the roots they move away from the sun that is negative zeotropism the shoot it grows towards the sun that is positive phototropism so the tropic movements towards the light are called as phototropism 
The second thing is gravity. That is earth. The roots always grow towards the earth. They grow down, not up. The shoot grows away from the earth. So in this case, the shoot it shows negative geotrophism away from the earth. The roots they show positive geotrophism moving towards the earth. That is gravity. And again, if you see that the roots they grow towards the water. So this is the earth. The roots may grow in this direction towards the earth. Sometimes here there is a water source. The root it grows towards the water. The roots of the plants and trees they move in the ground. Underground the roots will move. Movement is in search of water. So that is called as hydrotrophism. So these are the three familiar known tropisms. And what are the other two? Thigmotrophism, touch, chemotrophism, chemicals. So touch is also in case of uh, sometimes so here we see that the response quick response when we touch the mimosa plant the leaves they droop that is a response to touch and sometimes we see that the plant it moves towards an object that is to coil for support tendrils if you see the creepers climbers they have a soft thread like structure called tendril these tendrils they grow towards an object they coil around the object and they hold the they get the support to grow up grow straight because they do not have strength to go straight grow straight so they take help of this other objects with the help of tendrils and again there a tendril it coils around some object how can it coil how does it know how it produces that uh, coiling so thigmotrophism that is the tendrils some plants like creepers, climbers, they have got very weak stem. So by that, they cannot stand erect on their own because of less strength. They need some support. So they crawl or they climb other trees with the help of tendrils. They produce fine thread-like structures called tendrils. So these tendrils, they coil around an object. How they are able to coil around an object? The tendril, it comes in contact with some object. The part of the tendril which is in contact with the object it grows slower. The part of the tendril which is not in contact with the object, it grows faster. So by that it takes turn. So by that it can coil around the object. In this way it holds, it gets the support and it climbs. So that is kind of a tropic movement. We find the other one is chemotrophism. Here the example is, you know the process of fertilization in flower. When the pollen grain reaches the stigma of the flower, the female reproductive part here. So here the pollen tube it grows down, it extends and it goes down into the ovule. The pollen tube is growing. It is going into the ovary. But how do it know the direction? How it can go inside? What stimulus is directing the pollen tube to grow towards? It is because of the chemicals present inside the ovary. So the trophism towards the trophic movements towards the chemicals is called as chemotrophism. So in this way, various kinds of tropic movements are observed in plants and all these tropic movements are associated with growth. Now, let us see some plant hormones and how they help the plant in various situations. So the phytohormones, the major phytohormones here, we have auxins, cytokinins, gibberellins and abscisic acid. So let us see the first one, auxin. This is a very important hormone found in the plant, it helps the plant to grow in its height. So the height of the plant increases that is due to the hormone auxin. And not only that, this auxin is responsible for the plant to show phototrophism. Plants, they show response to light called as phototrophism. Phototrophism, that means tendency towards light. Sunlight, here is the sunlight, here is the window. So here is the sun, here you have a potted plant. So here, this is the direction of sunlight and here is the plant. Naturally, 
what happens the shoot of the plant always bends towards sunlight this is phototrophism that means the stem it bends towards sunlight it takes a bend like this so how this happens how can a plant bend towards the sun i already told you that the plants they show this phototrophism that is because of the chemical substance present in their bodies that is the auxin where is this auxin found auxin is found in the tip of the shoot of a plant say for example we take this part i am drawing a magnified view of this tip this is the tip of the plant here is the sun so this direction here is the tip i told you that auxins are found in the tip of the plant here 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 is the auxin now here is the sun what happens now this is the stimulus sunlight the auxin present here in the tip of the shoot it diffuses into the other side means the whole auxin will come to this other half the half which is away from the sunlight this half of the tip is towards the sunlight i'm drawing a dotted line so in this half there is no auxin all the auxin is diffused to the other side which side on which side there is no sunlight so sunlight is a stimulus when there is sunlight the auxin which is present on this side it diffuses to the other side so the concentration of the auxin increases in this part so this part whatever this part is there this part increases in its size so what happens here you can find the growth the growth is increased on this side say for example this is left this is right so uh, whatever the auxin is there on the left side all the auxin is migrated or diffused to the right side so the right side of the shoot tip is grown much bigger compared to the left side so automatically what happens it takes a bend like this so in this way the plant is able to bend towards sunlight this is what happens and here who is the responsible one the chemical messenger auxin is responsible auxin is also responsible to increase the height of the plant and whereas the next one cytokinins cytokinins it helps in the cell division the name itself tells cyto means cell kinesis means division breaking kinesis means breaking cyto means cell so this is the hormone which helps in cell division and this hormone is mostly found in the places where there is a rapid cell division where is the rapid cell division in which part of the plant you find cell division so here the cytokinins they help in the cell division these cytokinins are found in the fruits and seeds because in case of the fruit the fruits they grow rapidly so for the rapid growth lot of cell division is required and cytokinins are found in the fruits in the same way when the seeds are sprouting when they are becoming into seedlings and plants then there is rapid cell division there you find cytokinins so the next hormone gibberellins the gibberellins they help the plants growth in width wise the stem of the plant grows because of the gibberellins so auxins and gibberellins they help in the growth of the plant auxins help in increasing the length of the plant means for the cell elongation auxins are helpful and for the width of the plant the gibberellins they help and for cell division the cytokinins uh, they take the role of cell division so in this way different hormones help the plant in its growth is there any hormone to stop the growth of plant yes abscisic acid abscisic acid it is it works in reverse direction that means it helps the plant to stop its growth and shed the leaves so when there is a little amount of water scarcity of water when there is no sunlight in certain seasons like in which seasons you see the leaves falling in autumn season the leaves fall down the fall down of the leaf is because of this abscisic acid and even when the leaves are yellow that means when the leaves are ripen then the leaf has to be shed down otherwise the leaf consumes the energy present in the plant it is useless when the leaf turns to yellow it is useless for the plant because it cannot prepare any food so the leaf has to fall down so this abscisic acid it forms a layer between the stalk of the leaf and stem so by that it detaches the leaf and see that make makes the leaf to fall down 
so that is what done by the abscisic acid so these are the various plant hormones that help the plant in its growth in movements as well as in uh, controlling their uh, various uh, activities of their uh, life processes are coordinated by these phyto hormones